Thank you very much. So I'll be diving a little bit deeper into Chainlink data streams. I think a lot of you caught the product keynote yesterday where we already went over a lot of these things. But here I'm going to dive into a little bit more depth. There's going to be three parts. One, very quickly going over what we did in the last 12 months. Then very quickly what we'll be doing basically now. Uh, and then a couple of the deep dives, uh, a couple more of the technical changes that we're doing to really enable, frankly, the future of Chainlink data streams. So as I said uh, yesterday, Chainlink data streams was launched about a year ago. And we made it to be this critical infrastructure for high throughput DeFi. And we built it to, quote unquote, solve the Oracle problem. Uh, we were kind of running into this problem where we had push feeds, and that's very nice, but it wasn't fast enough. So we worked with a number of our users to make our push feeds faster and faster and faster. And it just wasn't good enough. We needed to go from minutes to seconds to even sub-seconds. Uh, and only chain like data streams could really provide that. The problem is, now that we built chain data streams, DeFi is actually pretty small. So we have about 88 um, crypto feeds live right now and about 10 or so uh, RWA feeds at this point. That's kind of lopsided if you think about it. DeFi is measured in billions, and other markets are measured in trillions and trillions of dollars. So we need something that's much more capable with a lot more data, because the requirements of off-chain finance are a lot higher in terms of data throughput than on-chain finance right now. And I think that Chainlink data streams is going to be that critical piece of the puzzle. I, I like to think of it a little bit like this, where you kind of start down here in this quadrant where you have the old business models that are enabled by the old technology. And old doesn't mean it was invented a while ago. It just means like it's not a new platform type technology. And then we invented blockchains. And so we kind of move up to uh, the next place where you take, for example, in the newspaper business, you go from physical newspapers to uploading PDFs to a website. It's nice. You can do it online now. But it doesn't like fundamentally change the paradigm. And I think that's where a lot of DeFi is today. It's really nice. But it's not super new or something. We've kind of done this before. It's just more efficient, which is good, but we can do better. And with a lot more data and a lot more faster data, we're kind of moving all the way to these net new financial primitives. And as you couldn't really predict that majority of people would be taking their news from social media a couple years ago, I don't think we can really predict what these new financial primitives are really going to look like. So I want to take you very quickly through the architecture of what Chainlink Data Streams looks like. So very quickly, all the way on the left side, you have our data providers. These are uh, what we call like tier one data providers at this point, but there's going to be a lot more. In actual fact, what it means is that our DAWN goes out to uh, any type of data source and fetches whatever it is that you need at that point. Then the data DAWN does compute on this if necessary, or just passes it through, whatever you, you kind of need. Uh, and that's then stored and available for uh, request. And then a user can go and fetch that request or the data through Chainlink Automation or through their own keeper or through whatever system basically works for you. You bring that data onto the chain where you are at and you verify it. And that verification makes sure that you have the guarantee that one, the data actually comes from the Chainlink data DAWN, and two, that nobody tampered with it in between uh, it coming from the DAWN and it landing on chain, including the keeper. So from a user perspective, if you use, for example, GMX, you know that the data comes from the data DAWN so that we didn't touch it. And you know for, ex for sure that GMX didn't touch it because it verifies. So I think that's a very nice system. And other people think so as well. Uh, we've done billions of dollars of volume. And we've also d already landed millions of uh, data points back on chain. So this is from the last 12 months. And even just in the last two months, we've seen a majority of this growth, actually. So we're really kind of hitting that takeoff velocity right here. I mean, yesterday on stage, I already announced it, but we have like 10 to 20% more market share coming online very shortly. Now, this is basically what's been doing, what we've been doing for the last 12 months. Now, very quickly about what we're going to be doing right now over the next couple of weeks. And that's what I call a vision with velocity for seven weeks. Um, as mentioned, we're going to be shipping to seven chains in seven weeks. So we were already live on uh, Arbitrum, AVAX, and on Base. And now we're going to be live on uh, OPBNB. You can use that today. Sony Minato Testnet. And we're going to be on uh, Scroll, Mantle, ZK Sync Era, and Optimism very, very shortly. It says live there. Uh, that's because I didn't edit the slide. Reach out to me if you want to get access to Optimism. And again, we're doing this for very good reasons. We're doing this because our users actually want to use Chainlink data streams. So 
I mean, I'm super happy that we're onboarding users like Akilox that's actually migrating from uh, a competitor of ours, upgrading into Chainlink data streams on OPBNB. Holdstation, which is doing billions of dollars of volume. This is a top five perptex. It's a build project, uh, and they're joining us on ZK Sync era. Syn Futures, which alone is like 10% of the market that we're securing now. And also projects like Zaros, Ostium, uh, Drake Exchange, Dexitus, and there's a lot more that we're talking to and also seeing what they need. So they're onboarding, they're getting the crypto feeds, but they want more than just crypto. Um, if you caught my panel just now, a very big thing that kind of everybody is thinking about in the perptech space is what do you need to offer to users to really make a really great experience? Crypto feeds are nice, but you need something a bit more. So we're also launching our real-world asset streams. Uh, they're on production testnet today, and you can get access to them on mainnet very shortly. Reach out to me and I'll get you set up. Uh, I'll be right here or like, walking around a little bit. Uh, we're starting with gold, silver, and uh, WTI. So gold, silver, and oil. And we're going to have uh, seven G10 currencies. But you can imagine it's going to be a lot more than just that, right? Because these are spot prices, but maybe you need interest rates. Maybe you need futures commodities. Maybe you need uh, bond prices, whatever it is. We have really good connections with tier one data providers and a lot of connections in TradFi as well. So reach out to us. Let, let us know what you kind of need, what you want to list, uh, and we'll get that set up for you. Now, last slide, two slides ago, I said seven chains in seven weeks. And that seven chain, because there were only six on that slide, is Solana, where we just launched on stage yesterday, uh, right there. So I'm super, super happy that we are now live on Solana. It's an early access, so it means you, you know, you got to reach out to me and I'll get you set up there as well. But our lightning fast feeds are now on the lightning fast chain. And I think that's really, really interesting because you can sort of get all the benefits of this speed for in the data side as well as on the execution side. And we're going live there with GMX Solana. And as mentioned as well, GMX Solana is a community project by a number of the original core contributors, but it actually forked out, it's, it's what they call a friendly fork, where they took the GMX v2 code base, translated it into Rust, and are now deploying it to Solana. And they're going to have a lot more feeds than GMX v2 proper. It's still connected, and they're going to be basically you know, uh, collaborating on a lot of things, and will probably have um, the same connections and a lot of the same users. But they're going to have a lot more data feeds, and they're also going to be a lot faster because uh, GMX v2 normally is on Arbitrum and AVAX, and this is really like a different offshoot there. Uh, and we're working very, very closely with this core team. They're honestly pretty cracked. So that's, uh, I'm very excited to work with these guys. Now, I want to take you a little bit through what we're going to be doing over the next 12 months. And it's a little different than what we've been doing with Chainlink data streams until now. So I think it's important to take a moment, take a step back, and really think about what we need. So. I want you to imagine having low latency and ultra-reliable feeds deployed within hours. Not days, not weeks, hours, if even that. And I want you to imagine a one-stop shop for any kind of data, not just pricing data, but mark prices, volatility surfaces, uh, market data, interest rates, whatever it is that you need. And I want you to imagine a custom feed for any type of data, any type of calculation that you want. You can dream it up and we can spin it up within a couple hours. And I want you to imagine that you're tokenizing an asset and you need a lot of data. You need custody data, you need year-to-date performance, you need a POR, you need multiple PORs maybe. Uh, you need to have the prices of the underlying assets, all this stuff. Imagine spinning up one feed that has all of this data encoded into it. That's what's gonna be Chainlink data streams. We're gonna move from critical infrastructure for high throughput DeFi to critical infrastructure for the future of on-chain finance. Because if we want to get serious and really onboard the trillions of dollars of assets that are out there, we need so much more than a couple feeds. So I like to call this, over the next 12 months, any data on any chain at scale. We need to be able to go out and get whatever it is that you need, bring it to where you are, and get you lots and lots of it. So we're going to be doing a lot of changes, right? So I'm, I'm going to take you through about four different changes that we're doing over the next 12 months, both on the product side as well as on the engineering side that will make this possible. So first, we're going into what we call multi-tiered data. We want to ignite your creativity, not mine. I'm a very nice guy, but I don't know exactly what you need. So while we can, for example, help you coordinate uh, data streams for prices, for blue chip assets, for forex currencies and that kind of stuff, you need a lot more. You need alternative market data, you need custom calculations, you need 
volatility surfaces, interest rates, again, anything that you need, we're going to be able to support that. And that means that we kind of take a step back in that process because we put the control in your hands. So you can reach out to us and tell us what it is that you need. We have a lot of data providers and we'll get it out for you. Now, we said hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of feeds by the end of next year. And to support that, we need a multi-stream architecture. So we're already launching prototypes of this today, and we're basically seeing what the performance is. And we found ways to increase our performance by up to 50x. That means that we're going to be able to support those hundreds uh, of feeds on a single DAWN very, very easily. And we're going to go from these hundreds of feeds to thousands to tens of thousands to be able to support all of that data. There's a lot of engineering work that went into this, and I'm incredibly proud of the engineering team for making this possible. It almost feels like a hack when they told it to me first. Then if we have thousands and thousands of feeds, that's really nice, but how do I even make sense of all that? To what we call a stream-based architecture. So this means that you're going to have all this alternative data, all this tier one data, uh, all the way on the left side with all these different data providers. We're going to be doing um, this with any input. We can do any calculation that you want on that input. And then we make it available in that stream. And that stream updates four times per second. So every 250 milliseconds. That's very fast. And it means we have an enormous amount of data points for you to sift through. And while everybody needs a lot of data, what data you need is unique to your protocol. So all the way on the right side, you can specify that you need an interest rate and a smart contract value and maybe a POR and maybe a couple prices. And you just pull exactly that report, what we call it, on chain wherever you need it. Another thing is that we need to deploy to a lot of chains very, very fast. So this is currently live and we call it signer-based report verification. And this is going to unleash lightning fast deployments, like really, really fast. Right now, we're already deploying in a matter of days. Not weeks anymore, not months anymore, but we can deploy to almost any EVM chain super, super fast. We're deploying to the chains where our users are whenever they want us to go live. What we're effectively doing here is we're stripping a lot of the logic out of the smart contracts and putting that into the actual data streams themselves. Again here, there are some really, really good engineers that worked on this, and I really want to give these guys a shout out. This is incredible work by them. Uh, and again, this is already live. This is what enabled us to ship to seven chains in seven weeks. Now, there's one more large change coming, and that's what we call Chainlink Data Streams Unified Billing. So we plan for data streams to integrate with a unified billing system to support the product's long-term economic sustainability through an end-to-end -end value flow. The two primary benefits for data streams in this case are going to be one, reducing the payment friction for applications by enabling them to pay in tokens that they already have, and two, consolidating the fee payments uh, across all these different chains into Link, which then ultimately flows to network service providers. This is ultimately achieved using a combination of CCIP, automation, uh, price feeds, and AMM smart contracts. And I look forward to sharing more about that one in the future. Now, with all of these changes, I think that we're really enabling Chainlink data streams to be this bridge between on-chain finance and off-chain finance so that we can get the incredible settlement benefits and all these guarantees of uh, smart contracts that exist on-chain with the Web2 scale data. Like we can truly become this bridge and get you whatever it is that you need, wherever you are. So if you have any data that you want to share with the world, or if you need any data for your protocol because you have specific needs, please do reach out to me. I want to get connected to you, and I want to support you. Thank you very much.